Today, moving forward, I'll be experimenting with the format of my daily vlogs. The plan is the first portion of the vlog will showcase my exercise for the day and the work that I'm putting in. So jujitsu, powerlifting, running, and then it'll transition into questions that were asked the day before. So usually I'll get two to four questions whenever I post a video. So I'll do my best to answer those questions. If it is more of a request video, like, hey, would you be able to show us your diet? Then I'll put that on my list of videos and then I'll get to that as soon as possible. And then after that, it'll get to whatever topic that I want to speak about. Boom, so let's get into it. Run for the day, was able to do an easy three mile run this morning, gonna throw the map up here splits up here and I spoke a little bit too soon about Strava working again. It does not work again and anytime that I run at the lake or the park behind my house, it just has it jumping back and forth. I'll show you what the map looks like here and the splits here. It has me running like four minute miles, five minute miles. I wish I was that fast and I actually think it might have me running like a three minute mile. So oh, it's definitely not right. Can't forget about my pull-ups. was able to do eight sets of 15 reps per set at body weight totaling at 120 reps today. And if you notice, whenever I do pull-ups, I have two types of grips that I usually use. The first one will be like just a normal grip, how you grip the bar. And the second one would be more of a thumbless grip and a hook grip. And for me personally, there is a difference between the two. Whenever I want to hit my back a little bit more, I will use that hook grip. And what the hook grip allows is that it isolates my back and my lats a little bit more versus the conventional like regular grip with the regular grip you're able to use your forearms a little bit more and this goes not just for the pull-ups but any type of curls even or even like a row or anything that any pulling motion when i do the hook grip like this i feel that it hits my lats and my back a lot more because I can't compensate with my forearms. Whenever I have a full grip like this, like a curl, like pretend I'm curling here, you can compensate and your wrist will turn in and then you'll be using your forearms just a little bit more so it'll be a little bit easier. And my body naturally will do that if the weight gets heavy enough. So same thing with pull-ups. The easier version is that full grip because when I'm pulling up this way, if it's getting a little bit tough, my wrist will curl in. I'll put more stress on my forearms and then that'll help me get up a little bit more versus the hook grip here. You, it's a lot harder to curl my wrists in. And for me, there is a time and a place for each grip. It's not worse or better one way or the other. For example, I will use the hook grip when I'm doing bicep curls if I want to solely target my biceps. The good thing about the hook grip when you're doing bicep curls for me is it concentrates all that weight on my bicep versus compensating with my wrist. Now, if I were to do that full grip with that same bicep curl, I'm still working my biceps but I am also working a little bit of my forearms as well. And the same thing goes for any type of pulling motion. If I use a hook grip, I'm able to hit my lats a little bit more. Though, if I were to use the full grip, I'm able to hit my lats and I'm able to work my forearms just a little bit more. Let me know your thoughts. So let's get to the questions. The first question is from my fellow small YouTuber Faisal. He asks, Vince, do you hit some accessory movements or mainly stick to compound lifts? For me, whenever I go to the gym or whenever I have a lifting session, I at least make sure to do one compound movement and I always do that compound movement first before I do anything else. If I have time after, then I'll transition into doing some accessory movements. Since I've been at home, I've really not done a lot of accessories, but when I'm at the gym, because there's so many machines, so much equipment, I'm more likely to do accessory movements. And a couple notes on the compound movements versus accessory movements. I usually spend 45 minutes to an hour just doing my compound lifts. That includes all of the warm up sets and then all of the working sets. With the accessory movements, I'll usually choose two to three accessory movements, and it's usually what I'm feeling for the day. Also, as an accessory movement or to help me not get injured, I also do a lot of cross training. It's not the same thing as an accessory movement, though I feel that cross training in jujitsu and running has really helped me stay injury free. Next question also comes from my fellow small YouTuber, Purpose Driven, AKA Coach Kev. He asked me my thoughts on the difference between a flat back and an arch back when it comes to bench pressing. 
With the flat back and arch back, there are pros and cons. I don't think one is better than the other. It just depends on your personal goal. With the arch back, how I was doing it yesterday, it's more of a power lifting setup where I have three points of contact, an arch back, and then my feet a little bit behind me on my tippy toes. With the power lifting setup, it's meant to be able to push the maximum amount of weight that my body can handle using my whole body, not just my upper body. So in terms of my output and how much weight that I can push, the power lifting setup is great for that. On the other hand, with a flat back on the bench with no arch and with no leg drive, I feel that it could be good for more development in your triceps, your shoulders, and your chest. Because you're not using your lower body and you're only using your upper body, it will be a lot more stress on that upper body portion. So in terms of muscle development, it definitely could be better for that. Next question also from a fellow small YouTuber, Jojo Binks. He asked me, do I still get sore? The only times I am really, really sore is when I am doing my squat five by five, five by four, five by three, whatever you wanna call it. But pretty much any other days, I'm not really that sore. Like I'm not sore from yesterday's bench session 195, five by four. I'm not ever sore from pull-ups and I'm not really ever sore from deadlifts. The only caveat to that is if I deadlift and then the next day or the two days after I go out on a super long run, I might feel a little bit stiffness in my lower back and my glutes. But as far as like being sore, being crushed and not being able to walk and get up and do much, I'm not really that sore. Also, anytime that I'm running an ultra distance, like 50 miles or more, I also tend to be pretty sore for the next couple of days. Last question of the day comes from another fellow small YouTuber. I love the love that all you small YouTubers are showing me. It comes from start doing. How do you balance strength training and running? Meaning how many times a week do you do each? So in terms of strength training, I usually try to strength train two to three times a week. And when I say strength train, I mean barbell lift. So squat, bench, deadlift. Pull-ups don't really count as necessarily strength training for me because my volume is so high on those pull-ups. I try to do pull-ups, you know, five, six days a week at least. And right now I'm actually trying to do it daily. So I don't really count that as necessarily strength training. And running, I run every single day. Some days it's just one mile and some days it's 20 or 26, like a marathon that I did a few weeks ago. It just depends on the week. And with that being said, right now I'm only balancing running and lifting. When jujitsu comes back, I'll have to shuffle things around even more. But right now, with those two, I'm running 40 to 50 miles a week on an average week, and then I am powerlifting two to three times a week, plus doing those pull-up sessions as well. And I have to be really, really smart with my programming. For example, if I am doing a heavy barbell session that day or any type of barbell session, I will keep it light as far as running. I might still go out for four or five miles, but the pace is a very, very chilled pace. And I have to be very, very smart and tactical with where I place certain workouts. For example, I still have my long run to do, which I'll probably do tomorrow. And that's why I'm taking a little bit light today. It was only pull-ups and it was only a three mile run. Though I can't do like squats and deadlifts two or three days before because it'll impede my long run. So I just have to be really, really structured and really, really tactical of where I place certain workouts. So if you didn't know, I have a huge weakness for desserts, mainly ice cream and mainly cake, cupcakes, anything dessert related pie. Whenever I indulge, that'll usually be the thing that takes up most of my calories. So today I'm gonna to share with you all my favorite ice cream for a few different reasons. And my favorite ice cream actually is this Halo Top Strawberry Cheesecake. I'm just super sad because it's seasonal and it's my favorite for a few different reasons. Reason number one, it's cause it has great macros. It's 380 calories per pint. It has 18 grams of protein and nine grams of fiber per pint. And Overall, it tastes really good as well. I know what you're thinking, like regular ice cream and Ben and Jerry's ice cream might taste a little bit better. But for me personally, I cannot get over how many calories or how 
much calories is in regular ice cream. So this is kind of like in the middle where I can enjoy it with no guilt and it has like high in protein and also high in fiber. A couple bonus ones. I always have ice cream in my freezer. Lately, I've been in love with these Klondike Crunch ones. The Crunch, Oreo, and then the mint flavor as well. And then also, I have this just Safeway brand of the mint chocolate chip. So I really, really like ice cream. I always have it no matter what. No matter what, like if I'm bulking, if I'm cutting, it does not matter. I have to have my ice cream. So thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I hope you all enjoy the new format of today's vlog and I'll try this moving forward and see how I like it. And if you have any questions, pop it down below. We'd love to hear from you all comments, questions, or concerns. So let me know what you think. Cause I think I covered a lot of topics today. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helped me out. If you want to catch another one of my videos, there's a video right here. There's a video right here. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right here. See you all tomorrow.